Wildlife by Cynthia de Felice. Chapter 19. When Eric finally paused to rest, he tried re to reason out what the man might do next. With no kid to present for a reward, would he just go home and forget the whole thing, or would he tell the police where he'd seen Eric, figuring the information might be worth something? Might he try to get some money from Oma and Big Daryl for Uncle Dan's gun? The possibilities ran circles through his head until he gave up trying to guess. All he could do, he figured, was decide on a plan of his own. To his relief, he realized that the storm appeared to have blown itself out. The cold front that had swooped in so ferociously, be bringing the snow with it, had passed. One by one, stars began to show themselves, and a three-quarter moon became visible. After a while, Eric was able to spot the Big Dipper, and from there, to find the North Star. He'd been running south. Now he would follow the star and head north. He reached down and hugged Quill to him hard, and he stood up and started walking. Using the stars, they walked through the night, and when the sun rose, they kept on moving steadily north. When Eric was thirsty, he ate snow, and Quill did the same. Quill's energy never flagged in the clear, cool air, though Eric felt his own pace slow from time to time. With no gun and no food, they didn't stop to hunt or eat or sleep. Quill scrounged food whenever she could. Dead mice and moles, scat from various animals, things Eric couldn't identify, and wasn't sure he wanted to. Oddly, he didn't feel hungry. A vague but strong sense of purpose gripped him, driving him to, it, to retrace his steps back to where he had started. As he walked, it seemed to him he was seeing the life of the prairie with great sharpness and clarity. He stopped to watch a coyote hunting in the grass for mice, pouncing, chasing, pouncing and chasing like a kitten at play. When the coyote finally looked up and saw him, it went slinking away. He watched a marsh hawk soar low along the ground and dip gracefully to catch a mouse in its talons, and saw a red tail hawk drop from the bare branches of a lightning-scarred tree to snag a pheasant from the grass below. When they came to a wide area of rolling hillocks, they spooked a covey of sharp-tailed grouse. Eric heard for the first time their alarm call. They all flew over the next rise and disappeared. Night fell again, and still they kept on. Eric's eyes became accustomed to the darkness, and he was aided by the light of the moon and the flames of one of the gas fires burning in an oil rig on the outskirts of Fortuna. When he recognized the barn and corral where he had gotten water his first night out, he felt proud that he was on the right track, that he was finding his way. And then several hours later, he came to the straight line of trees bordering the side of his grandparents' farmhouse. He approached, and the house its itself loomed before him. When he walked around the corner and stood for a moment at the porch steps, he saw a bluish light coming from the downstairs window. Creeping closer, he peered in and saw Big Daryl sitting and watching the snowy picture on the old television set. The sight of his grandfather caused him to stop, his heart thudding nervously. He watched for several moments, wondering what Big Daryl, who kept farmer's hours, was doing up at what had to be close to two o'clock in the morning. Probably he was too angry to sleep. He was contemplating what he'd do when he got his hands on Eric at last. Quill, perhaps anxious either to go inside or move on, let out a little whine, and Big Daryl, startled, lifted his head to listen. He stood, walked to the door, and opened it, gazing blindly into the darkness for a moment. Dan, he called in a low voice. Dan? Then he shook his head and rubbed his eyes and peered closely at Eric, who must have appeared to him as nothing more than a shadowy shape. Eric, is that you? Yes, Eric said, climbing up the stairs, mindful of the broken steps Oma had warned him about the first night he'd come. It seemed a very long time. It's me. He reached the porch, Quill following, and stopped, facing his grandfather. Before he could say anything more, Big Daryl gathered him in a clumsy embrace, made more awkward by the pack on Eric's back. In the silence afterwards, Big Daryl said in a low voice, so low, Eric had to strain to hear, I lost one boy, didn't think I could stand to lose another. Stay tuned next time for Chapter 20.